if someone is a complete beginner with DSA, data structures and algorithms and lead code, what would you suggest step by step by step they do over a six to 12 month period to actually get good enough to get to that intermediate stage? Yeah, I think it depends. I think there's like two kind of approaches that I would suggest. I think one is where people just don't like to go through theory and stuff. People just want to get their hands dirty. They just want to dive into it. You can just start solving problems. Now, like that's one resource, like Neat Code is one resource to do that where you can go through the list and like there's a few beginner friendly lists on there, but it, it really doesn't matter. Like don't overthink it is what I'm trying to say. If you get to a problem and you think it's like crazy hard, then okay, maybe try an easier problem. Now, if you get to uh, an easy problem, but you still don't quite know how to solve it, try to see what you're missing. Feel free to look at the solution. You're just trying to learn. Like you're just trying to collect data points and just do. You're not trying to sit there and watch like a five hour video because I promise you, you're not going to learn as much as you think from that. You want to get like, you want to move your hands. You want to type your fingers. You want to like type something. Um, And then there's the other approach where people, like a lot of the problems where if you need to know like a certain concept, then you have to go and learn about it. Some people don't like doing that. They want to just learn about like all the the most important like theory concepts up front. And for that, I would go through some kind of course. Like there's a course on Neat Code if you want to do that. But there's a million ways to learn this stuff. Um, and again, like when you're going through that theory, you want to still be like hands on with that as well. You want to like as you're learning the concepts, like how does a hash map work? How does a heap work? How do you do sorting? You want to be actually like doing exercises. Uh, to do that. So whether you're just writing code on pen and paper, whether you're running it in your own IDE, whether you're using a platform like Neat Code or Leak Code, um, you just want to do that. So that's what I would say. Don't overthink it too much. Just start doing stuff. Just start solving problems. Focus on the most important concepts like hash maps, sorting, uh, stacks, arrays, things like that. And uh, yeah, just do it. So if someone is completely fresh, they don't really have any data structures and algorithms experience, nor any lead code experience, do you recommend they do a DSA course first and then go into lead code or do both at the same time? So they learn a data structures concept, like they learn about hash tables, hash maps, and then they solve some lead code problems with it? Or do you recommend a reverse order where they don't even try and learn the theory, they just go straight into lead code? What do you think the optimal order of actually learning this is? Yeah, for somebody who's never done like a data structures and algorithms course, like even in college, highly recommend doing some kind of course because you definitely want to get an idea of like the common data structures. You want to know like what an array is. Okay, you can insert, you know, what kind of what are the big O op, like time complexities of the main operations with an array? How does that compare to a hash map? How does that compare to a stack, a heap, um, a binary tree? And uh, those concepts, that, that's why I say you want to have at least an understanding of the big concepts like trees and stuff, because learning that in a leak code problem, if you've never seen a binary tree before in a leak code problem, that might be kind of intimidating. And like same thing with like the graph traversals. Like if you don't know like recursion, it's going to be kind of hard to learn like DFS on like as you need it when you're solving a problem. So I would get a good understanding of the fundamentals. Recursion is a really big one. Um, And there's a lot of courses you can use to do that. Uh, But then I would start solving problems. Like don't focus too much on theory. You don't need to know every single like shortest path, minimum spanning tree algorithm before you start solving problems. Because when you actually get into the interview, think about what's going to happen. Statistically, you're going to be asked a question around one of the big concepts, graphs, trees, and stuff like that. Uh, so a strategy that many people take is they don't even touch the niche topics because, well, shit, if I get asked that, I'm not going to know it anyway. I'm going to, I'm not going to answer the question correctly. So I'm just going to bet that I'm going to be asked one of these big concept questions and then just prepare for that. So, yeah. That's actually my approach, which I tell people to do. Um, I made a video where I basically took your Neat Code 150 and then even, which 150 problems isn't even that much anyway, but I even shortened it down to just like 49 of those big, like, four or five topics um, leaving. I left out dynamic programming off of that because I'm like, OK, sure, some people get DP questions. But when I was interviewing 70, 60, 70 percent of the time, I didn't even touch dynamic programming. So if someone's completely new, why are they worrying about those niche topics like um, those math and like logic puzzles as well as stuff like that? So um, I kind of consider like the Pareto problem set or like the 80 20 principle, which is if someone's completely new, they should probably start with those really high ROI topics arrays, hash tables, strings, binary trees, graphs, before worrying about all those niche edge cases as well. But kind of going back to 
those that stage, like beginner, intermediate, advanced. What do you think an intermediate lead code, a person at lead code is like? What are those characteristics when someone goes from beginner to intermediate? And what would you? What does it look like when someone has that intermediate lead code ability? I think usually they're able to see a problem, like a graph problem, and kind of. Uh, like like you get to the point where you've solved so many problems that you kind of know like, okay, I see a graph problem. It's probably going to be some kind of a traversal. Like they don't need a cheat sheet to tell them that. They just kind of like have that muscle memory built in. And then they can kind of code up. Like if they know the solution to a problem, they can code it up relatively quickly. A lot of people, uh, there, there's two parts where you can get stuck on a problem where you don't know the solution. And in my opinion, that's like the hardest part. Because some problems are just crazy difficult. You, you just won't know the solution to it unless you've seen it before. And then once you do know the solution, like if somebody, if you have an interviewer and they give you a hint and they tell you, okay, you can do DFS for this. Like the, I, I already told you kind of the solution. Now I want to see you code it up. Well, you should be able to code up it, it pretty quickly. Like that's the easier part. You should know how to implement these algorithms. You should have practiced it so many times that you can kind of do it without thinking about it too much. At least like the core template. Like if you have binary search, Binary search is done a certain way. You should know the core template pretty quickly. Same thing with graph traversals. Same thing with like a sorting algorithm. You should know it pretty quickly. So just kind of having like that muscle memory and then having a good familiarity with like the big concepts that you mentioned. So I think that's kind of like that's a reasonable, reasonably good leak coder because now you're in a position where, okay, now you can start tackling some of the more advanced concepts because there's no way you're going to learn an advanced concept unless you know the fundamentals. Like you've got to be really, really good at recursion before you start learning some of those crazy algorithms. I feel like people don't even realize that a lead code often is two parts. Like you said, one is just understanding the general algorithm or general how the solution works. And then part two is actually coding it up effectively. And people tend to actually struggle with them differently, right? I think one example would be, let's say you take like a pure math major or like a mathematician. I'm sure like, you know, mathematicians, they can think of like, oh, this, this would be like a way you do it. But and they can maybe write like a formal proof about it, but they probably can't. Maybe they couldn't code it up because they don't know how to code anything. Right. On the other side, you could have like a bit of like a code junkie. Someone who's building like tools since they were like in high school or middle school. Sure, maybe they can code something up, but they can't. They don't have the problem solving ability to actually come up with a solution. So the way I think about it is I tell people to treat them at two distinct stages. And I think your videos are great for this as well, because you do it in two different stages. I don't believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, you don't seem to code it in Python until you've actually discussed the theory with a pen and a paper on like your iPad or whatever. <laughs> um, because you, it's no, at some point you've been writing a single line of code until you kind of know what the solution is in entirety. You should be able to think of the solution on paper, write out a bit of the pseudocode, be able to run through the examples, think of your own edge cases, think about multiple edge cases before even writing a line of code. So I think one of the best ways to do it, like you said, is to split those into two phases and work on them independently of each other. But kind of going from that beginner to intermediate transformation, how long should the average CS major take? Let's say they've done one data structures and algorithms course, one or two semesters of some basic algorithms. How long do you think it'll take for someone who hasn't really done any leak code? Maybe they've only done two some to get to that point, the intermediate level where they know probably 80% of those basic algorithms. They can, you know, they can write out um, DFS, BFS, binary trees, like binary store, like stuff like that pretty easily in their back pocket and solve a lot of the basic medium leak code problems. Yeah, I think that's interesting because I haven't prepared the way that a lot of my users do. Cause when I was doing this, I, I didn't have like a resource like neat code. So I was going through like the problem. I was going through leak code, like discuss and seeing other people's solutions. They did not explain them very well. So I would just read through the code, like very painfully trying to understand it. Taught me a lot. Like I'm able to read like really complex code and kind of decipher it. And that's a skill to learn. But it's not the most effective when you're just trying to prepare for an interview and just trying to get a job and do that as quickly as possible. So I would definitely recommend um, if you get stuck on a problem, like go through problems. And if you get stuck, don't spend too much time. Don't waste too much time because you might go down a wrong path and convince yourself that it's correct. And then eventually it turns out to not be the correct path. And the problem that I had with that is that my brain, then when I would revisit that same problem, my brain would automatically go down that wrong path because I, I went so far down and I convinced myself it was right that I didn't even remember the correct solution, even if I had already looked at it. So uh, I would not spend too much time. Um, now, it depends on the person, like how long it takes them to understand a solution. But I, um, I would go through the videos and then try to code it up. And uh, I think you could spend like a couple hours on each problem and get through it pretty quickly. 
make sure to like revisit problems that you uh, weren't able to solve and then try to solve them again to really build that coding muscle memory. And another thing people can do is just go through problems and see, uh, instead of like implementing it from scratch, a quicker way to like review solutions is just to go through problems and see, okay, do I remember the solution to this problem? And if I don't remember it, can I like think of it within a few minutes? And if not, uh, then you should look at the solution. And I think that general process, if you do that for like 100 to 200 problems, shouldn't take you more than like two months of like a couple hours a day. So hopefully not too much longer than that. And I think that's probably reasonable if somebody has like a summer that they're preparing for or if they're in college, um, because obviously nobody has an infinite amount of time. So especially if you're working a job already, you want to go through things as quickly as possible. But at the same time, you don't want to cheat yourself. So you know, make sure when you're typing out the code, try to type out the code without looking at the code, try to understand the code and then forget about the code and now implement it from scratch. Um, so, yeah. So kind of diving into, let's say someone just picks up a lead code problem that they're just working on. What do you think like kind of minute by minute they should be doing here? So let's say they're, again, we're going like the average yes major. They haven't seen the problem before. They're struggling a bit. How long do they struggle with the problem until you recommend they look at the solution? For me, what I recommend they do is I actually say watch the first half of an eCode video. <laughs> so I'll be like, okay, if you're if you're spending maybe 30 minutes thinking about what the solution is going to be, 20, 30 minutes, you've written it out by by hand, you just can't figure out how to make it work. Then at that point, I would say, okay, just watch the first half of one of your videos. Understand how the the, the algorithm is going to work, but don't watch NeCode code it up. You want to code it up yourself because that actually helps you integrate it. Only when you are you know the algorithm, you understand it, and you still can't code it up then watch you code it. Do you agree with that approach or is there an alternative strategy you would take? Yeah, I completely agree with that because it's all about learning to think. Like you don't want to outsource your thinking to a YouTube video, to an LLM or anything like that. Like you you need to think. Now that does not mean you're going to arrive at the correct solution. You're going to know every edge case and anything like that. But you got to think. Like if, if I see a problem, easy, medium or hard, and I don't know how to solve it, okay, uh, I'll spend some time on it. Let's say like 15 to 30 minutes. and uh, even if I know I, I get to a point where, okay, I'm not going to be able to solve this problem. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, like 99% of you, including myself, not able to solve a lot of the medium and hard problems when I see them for the first time. I just, I'm just not that smart. I just haven't done that much competitive programming. And I would argue it's really not that much about intelligence either. It's just about like, if you have the background or not like a math background or whatever. Uh, but uh, and then, okay, you don't know how to solve the problem. Well, I'm going to look at the solution. Okay, but before I look at the solution, let's at least take a couple minutes to think, where am I stuck? Like, don't just read the problem description and then throw your hands up in the air. I don't know what to do. Well, think about it a little deeper. Okay, it's an array problem or it's a graph problem. I know it's going to be some kind of graph traversal. Okay, is it going to be DFS or BFS? Do you not know what those algorithms are? If so, yeah, you're not going to be able to solve the problem. Just watch the video. If you know what those algorithms are, do you just not know how to apply it to this uh, situation? Is there an edge case that it's missing? Like go through that thought process, take notes and, and really focus on, okay, this is where I got stuck. This is the part I don't know how to handle. How is neat code going to handle it in the video? And then you'll, your brain will really pay attention to that. that that's how you kind of like wire your brain to learn what the solution to that actually is and why it works in a specific way. So, uh, you know, whatever you do, don't, uh, uh, outsource your thinking. And the reason people outsource their thinking is because it's easy. If, if you're just trying to solve a problem, yes, you know, use an LLM, that's the fastest way, but you're probably not just trying to solve problems. You're trying to learn. So don't, don't like skip that most important step. I think lead code requires a lot of intellectual honesty where you have to know yourself enough to know when you don't get it. And you have to know that you gave it an honest effort because again, like I, I keep telling people lead code is like going to the gym for a computer science major. Sure. If you're bench pressing, you can have three guys help you lift the weight up, which I equate to using an LLM. But what's the goal? Is the goal to get the weight up or is the goal to actually sculpt that physique and to, to get strong? The goal is to get strong, but for lead code, obviously. So you want to allow yourself to struggle. I think people struggling is uncomfortable. It's, it's, it's not fun to look at a lead code problem and not know how to solve it and to just keep thinking of different ways and to not be able to figure it out. And I remember when I was first learning Lee code, it was probably my second year of university after my first internship, which is at a really small company. I wanted to gun it for Amazon, some of these big companies, right? And I was sitting there and even like reversing a linked list was not easy for me. I just sit there for maybe like an hour and I wrote some convoluted code, which ran for some test cases, didn't work for all of them. I don't think 
I, I didn't know about your channel at that, that point. <laughs> so I was trying to like go through the lead code forum, understand it. It's not fun. It's not easy. But that challenge is where the growth is had. And before you know it, if you really accept the challenge and you keep going, within six months, you'll start to look back at those problems and they'll just come like that, which is honestly a magical feeling to look at a problem you solved three to six months ago, look back at your formerly submitted solutions on LeetCode, look how horrible the solution is and realize, wow, like I can write this so much better now because that growth happens in the background. So that's at least how I think about it. Yeah, exactly. And I think yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. I agree. Listen up. If you're struggling to land an amazing software engineer internship or full-time job, and if you've submitted dozens of applications and you feel like nothing is working, or you just feel like you don't understand the process, I actually run a school for people who want to land great software engineering jobs called the Software Engineering Accelerator. And over the past year, we've helped dozens of students land incredible jobs and internships at companies like Capital One, Amazon, Google, LinkedIn, Adobe, MongoDB, and the list goes on. And the best part about our program is that we actually guarantee the outcome. So if you don't get the internship or full-time job you want, you don't pay. So if you're interested in working directly with me to land an incredible job in tech, absolutely guaranteed. Check out the link in the description and submit an application to join us.